Good evening, everybody. My name is Francine Romero. I am the Associate Dean of the College of Public Policy. We are one of your hosts for this evening. We are very happy to be partnering tonight with the League of Women Voters. We have some very special guests from the League with us tonight, but I'm going to let Phyllis Ingram, who is our local president, introduce those. We love working with Phyllis. Um, in fact, we just did the county judge primary debates several months ago, and we are so glad to have all four candidates here with us tonight. Part of the College of Public Policy's mission is to help facilitate this kind of dialogue among the community. So we're so glad you're all here and that this is the space where we can have a great debate, perhaps the only one with all four candidates. I don't know, but I'll, I'll claim credit for that. Um, we are also partnering with some of our student organizations tonight. So uh, we have Jason, Whitney, and Isaias from Alpha Phi Sigma. Uh, that is our criminal justice, it's our National Criminal Justice Honor Society. Uh, we have Carlos and Liz from PASO, which is our public administration student organization. We actually have a Bachelor's of Public Administration here at UTSA. <laughs> and Connor is here as a representative from our overall UTSA Student Government Association, and they are always a great partner with us. And finally, our other great partner, NowCast SA, uh, as Charlotte Ann Lucas is back there, they are live streaming this event. And you can also watch this event later. There's some little orange cards at the back that tell you how to get to Nowcast SA. Nowcast SA is a nonprofit organization, and they do great things for our community. So if you don't know about their work, I hope you get to know their work. So again, thank you all very much. And it's now my honor to introduce Phyllis Ingram. Thank you, Francine. Um, I would also like to thank the student organizations for partnering with us. Um, it's great to see so many intelligent, engaged young people. Um, so thank you again. Um, I'd like to welcome, <coughs> excuse me, welcome you all here. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan political organization that encourages informed and active participation in government. We never support or oppose any candidate or party. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, candidate forums are one of the ways that we help citizens stay informed on um, the issues in any election. And I would really like to thank the candidates for being here this evening um, to, to share with you their positions on the topics of interest to you. There are three by five cards on the table outside and some pens. Um, I would appreciate, and uh, Carlos, do you have some cards? You already took, gave them out, okay. Um, if you have a card or if you would like a card, just raise your hand and we'll make sure you get some. Um, election, I'm sorry, early voting starts on November 20th, Monday, and ends on Friday. I'm sorry, October 20th, it ends on Friday, October 31st. Um, election day is November 4th. Um, out of courtesy to the candidates and the audience members, I'm going to ask you all, aghast young people, to please silence all personal communications devices for the duration of the debate. Um, I'd like to thank Dr. Romero and the UTSA College of Public Policy. Um, we have had some, some great partnerships and have been able to host several different candidate forums. They're wonderful um, partners to work with. Um, I'd like to, at this time, introduce the national president of the League of Women Voters, who would like to just say a few words to you before we start. Please welcome Elizabeth McNamara, President LWV US. I just want to thank you all so much. I'm very, very pleased to be here in Texas. It is wonderful uh, to see such a, one, uh, such a great audience here tonight for this, uh, for this candidate forum. Uh, as Phyllis said, the League of Women Voters uh, is a direct outgrowth of the fight to get women the right to vote. And for the last 94 years, the League has been 
a large part of the league mission has been making sure that every eligible voter has got the information that they need in order to be able to cast an informed vote. And that's what we're doing here tonight, is having an opportunity to talk to candidates who want an office that is very, very close to, uh, to, our, to our daily lives. It probably is one of the most, these are probably some of the most important elections that we will participate in this November because we are electing the folks that make decisions that affect our daily lives. And the League is very, very proud to be able to bring you this opportunity to interact with your, with your candidates, to be able to ask your questions. And the League is doing this kind of forum probably t uh, tonight all over in communities all over the country. So I am very, very thrilled to be here. I'm always excited to be able to participate in these in these events, and I'm very, very glad um, that you all are here and that we're going to be able to really engage in something that is this central in this core to our democracy. So thank you all for being here, and thank you for having me. Also with us this evening, um, this is like a big deal for us tonight, is our state president, the president of the LWV Texas, Elaine Wyatt. Um, candidates with us this evening, and I'll start closest to me and work my way down, are um, Paul Pipkin with the Green Party, Rhett Smith, sorry, Rhett Smith with the Libertarian Party, Carlton Souls with the Republican Party, and Nelson Wolf with the Democratic Party. As this is an informational forum and not a debate, the candidates have agreed not to refrain from directing questions to each other or questions or remarks to each other and all questions will come from the moderator. The candidates will have a two minute opening statement and then we'll rotate questions so that each candidate will have an opportunity to answer first and last. At the conclusion of the questioning, each candidate will have two minutes for a closing station. Statement. Jason Chamnis of Alpha Phi Sigma will be the timer for the forum. He'll hold up a yellow card when the candidates have 20 seconds remaining and a red card when their time is up. And um, we would like to be able to ask as many questions as we can, so we're asking all candidates to please um, pay attention to the, the signs that come up. The uh, county judge, well, first of all, I'd like to say to you that this is a very important election. Every election is an important election, but we will be electing a lot of local representatives, the people who affect and impact your daily lives, much more so than the President of the United States, although that is a very important office. But your local representatives are the people that you can reach out to. They affect what affects you on a daily basis. So the county judge serves as head of commissioner's court, the administrative body for Bear County. Commissioner's Court sets the tax rate and adopts the county budget, enters into contracts for maintaining county roads and bridges, and administering such services as county hospitals, welfare programs, parks, and playgrounds. Uh, we do have some questions prepared by the students and the League of Women Voters. So with that, we will begin with the opening statements. Paul Pip Pipkin will have two minutes for his opening statement. Um, <clears throat> government has to be able to plan because investment cannot. Or you can seed projects, uh, 50, 60 million dollars. But then uh, once you've seeded it, uh, venture capital chases uh, short-term profit down the mission reach. Uh, and I uh, presume over there at Brooks as well. Uh, bigger capital ramps up production at Calumet. Uh, 
was more or less with indifference as to uh, uh, how much toxicity is spewed out unmonitored into your air? And does anybody uh, care about what happens when those two meet? You know, uh, Mission Reach is so far has, uh, has been most notorious for scattering the local residents like cockroaches. Okay, uh, well, uh, I'm wondering about the, uh, the, the real people that the developers tend to place in, and tend to place in condos down there. Uh, do we expect that they will be choking on toxic emissions from Calumet uh, when uh, they're jogging to their health clubs. Uh, government should be planning and taking a role in, uh, uh, in what is otherwise what we used to call the anarchy of production. Money is just going to chase the short-term profits. You know, if your idea of, of being a public official is to facilitate speculation, uh, then there's no problem. And perhaps your watch will be over when the consequences are arrived. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Rhett Smith will give his two-minute opening statement. Thank you. And thanks to the League of Women Voters. Uh, I'm so thrilled uh, to be participating in this and talking about uh, the important role that women play in guiding our world, and we would like to see more of that. My name is Rhett Rosenquist Smith, and I am reminded uh, that I should acknowledge my mother's uh, side of the family, my mother's maiden name. My uh, grandfather was Judge Rosenquist, who was an immigrant and became a judge here in Texas. The Libertarian Party, America's third largest political party, our vision is a world in which all individuals can freely exercise the natural right of sole dominion over their own lives, their own property, and their own liberty and freedom. And we believe very strongly, I believe very strongly, in public transparency and accountability, and I would like to challenge my uh, other candidates up here uh, if they would uh, more fully disclose uh, where their funding is coming from so that you could know that. Uh, I know that that is on file. That's required uh, to some extent by the state of Texas ethics laws but uh, I would like for that to be available so that you all can know that information today as we're speaking, and also where their personal wealth has come from, how they've amassed uh, their own, you know, at least uh, make their uh, income taxes available to uh, the public, because uh, certainly these are issues that uh, affect us all. One of the most important issues is the accountability and making sure that public servants are elected and not politicians. And I am running uh, because over many years, uh, certainly the last decade, I've been very concerned about the direction of not only local uh, politics, but also our global politics, our national politics. And I think the Libertarian Party uh, is a new party, uh, some, somewhat like the Green Party. We haven't been around that many decades, but uh, I believe very strongly that if we offer the voters, citizens, taxpayers like yourselves, a better chance, a better alternative that you can get involved and you can change the world. Uh, basically, uh, we want to make sure that, you know, that we can deal with the needs of society, but uh, I will immediately put together a coalition devoting half of my salary. I'm not sure exactly uh, what Ju Judge Wolf gets uh, from the taxpayers as far as his salary. It's over $100,000 and I will devote exactly half of my salary to reaching out to the community and making sure that more people are involved on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis uh, so that you know, we have a more homogeneous and more, uh, really more voices involved in our government. I think that- Thank you, Mr. Smith. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Carlton Souls will now give his two minute opening statement. Thank you. Uh, my name? Can you hear me? Uh, my name is Carlton Souls, and uh, just a little bit about myself. I was born and raised in San Antonio. I was a successful businessman. Uh, spent about 20 years working in various boards, commissions, uh, charities. Before I got involved in city government, 
I was elected in 2011 to San Antonio City Council and uh, stepped down in January of this year as required by uh, the charter to run for a Bear County judge. Uh, I'm running really because I see uh, the county going in a direction I don't believe is good for our future. I see the county becoming focused on essentially a small area of the center city, which I love and we're in right now and I've supported, but the role of the county judge in commissioner's court is bigger than uh, Central City San Antonio. Give you an example. Bear County is 1,200 square miles compared to 500 square miles in San Antonio. Uh, Bear County has almost 2 million people in it, 24 different cities. There's 24 city councilmen or 24 mayors, 24 different city councils that the county judge has to interface with. Additionally, we've got unbelievable growth in the counties uh, to our north, Comal, Guadalupe, uh, Kendall County, all growing more than 30 percent. We're going to be the size, this is scary, of DFW uh, in 25 years. And that's what we've, we're faced with. We've got tremendous challenges, but we've got opportunities. Uh, one of the things, and I know two minutes is coming up soon, since we're talking to students, one of my concerns is that we, are, we have in Bear County the seventh largest city in the United States of America. And I see way too many of our best and brightest, and some of you in this room, when you graduate, thinking about having to leave. Now, it's, you, know, you may go to Dallas, you may go to Houston, you may go to Austin or somewhere uh, out of state, but I want to make sure that we have the environment that each and every student that graduates and wants to be in San Antonio has the opportunity uh, to stay here. I want my kids and future grandkids to have that same opportunity. So uh, I hope you'll see uh, there's a lot of differences between the candidates up here and that you'll have a clear decision at the end of the night. And thank you so much for spending uh, your evening with us. Well, let me uh, thank the League of Women Voters. We were just talking a little while ago. We got the heck beat out of us 40 years ago when we tried to bring a new constitution to the state. I was a member of the Texas legislature and it sponsored that. And uh, I just want to thank you for working so hard to make that happen. One of these days, it will come about. Uh, I, I want to thank you for allowing me to serve as county judge, serve as your, as your mayor in the 90s and then serve in the legislature back in the 1970s. What we've done in, in uh, county government is pretty much what we did when I had Sun Harvest Farms, a natural food grocery store. We continue to invest in major projects, can invest in ourselves that will, that will show a return. We've built 13 regional amateur sports parks all across the, the county. Uh, we've built Bibliotech, and, and Chris Maloney is here today. Uh, that uh, we've, I've been criticized on this, Chris. She's the chair of our, of our uh, of our uh, advisory board and, and, and led us the way into doing this and, and the great job that she's done down here also. We just built the Tobin Center uh, that was primarily a, 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 a county funded. Uh, the, the Mission Reach of the River, I'm sorry he said that, but it's the largest ecological restoration of a major river anywhere in the urban United States. It links all our four missions. It's absolutely beautiful ecological restoration going down there. And we invested a great deal of money in our hospital system. You see it very close to you, the six-story building. Then if you go out to the medical center, you'll see the one that's 10 stories, a trauma tower. And we made a huge investment in that. We're also investing a great deal of money in 281 and 1604. But we do believe that we need to be a player and try to encourage people to live in the center city. It's a vibrant place to live. It's one that we've now got going. And anybody that lives downtown, or in the central city, you thank them because it's a heck of a lot less cost to you as a taxpayer if they happen to live in the central city where we have services and where we can hold our costs down. Thank you. Okay, we will now have, each of the candidates will have one minute to answer the same question. And the first question is kind of a big picture question. Please tell us about one thing you plan to accomplish in your first six months in office. And we'll start, I'm sorry, we'll start with Rhett Smith. Okay, uh, I did enumerate that I intend to immediately uh, devote half my salary to including more of the community. Uh, the other thing that I didn't get to address is, trans is the public uh, availability of the meetings of Bear County Commissioners Court and I've gone to Bear County Commissioners Court and asked to get 
you know, the public file or, or some way, the city of San Antonio at least uh, videotapes uh, the proceedings and that's broadcast live and it is in, in Bear County, actually Bear County is part of that system. But you can get an archive of those proceedings in San Antonio. Bear County has no archive. The only archive they have is an audio archive. How is that going to help you, you know? I mean, it would be very hard to go back and listen to an old Bear County Commissioner's Court meeting and understand, you know, who's talking and what's going on without a, you know, why not have the video record? It doesn't cost that much. And why not have that available on the internet so when you're sitting at home, you don't have to drive down to Bear County Commissioner's Court or have, you know, this TV hookup and everything. Get on your computer and uh, you can see Bear County Commissioner's Court even one day. Hopefully we'll have the availability so that you can actually participate. Thank you. Mr. Souls. Thank you. Uh, three things, actually. Uh, first, as head of the county, I'll convene a uh, immediate review of all of our departments as well as personnel and make sure that we are operating in the most efficient way possible with your tax dollars. Uh, second, I will begin discussions, which I've already met with, I've been to 20 different city council meetings in the last uh, 120 days, talking to outlying areas and to, uh, to leaders throughout the community. We need to convene meetings with our adjacent counties and with all the municipalities within Bear County and begin to formulate plans uh, going forward. There is no communication today, and so it's very hard to uh, come up with a plan if people aren't talking. Uh, and third, I want to get immediately on transportation. We have, we're talking uh, long-range plans, and we're probably going to get into rail or streetcar versus non. We have people today who it takes them a half hour to get out of their neighborhood to get onto a congested arterial so they can get to a backed-up freeway. And we need to begin addressing the, the immediate transportation needs of the taxpayers of Bear County. Well, Thanks. we'll be working, uh, working on a number of issues, but the, the, the hottest issue is going to be the one starting right after we're sworn in, and that'll be in January when the legislature goes into session. We just had a health care conference. I mentioned to you a few minutes ago the investment that we've made locally in our Bear County hospital system. The Texas legislature has a right to do some, has the opportunity to do some things that are going to be good for all of us. It doesn't matter whether you're sick or I'm sick. If you're sick, I'm going to get sick. We've got 24 percent of the people here in the county that do not have insurance. They're hardworking people but do not have it. We want to convince the legislature to expand health care in, in, uh, in Texas. Uh, it's a red state. It's a Republican state. We understand that. Do what nine other states have done. Expand the coverage by doing commercial insurance, having a copay payment. But it would help us here a great deal here in Bear County. It would certainly help our <laughs> hospital district. We're also going to be working on a number of other health care issues in the Texas legislature, many of them doing with mental health illness, with workforce development that UTSA is playing a very important part in, the workforce for the health care industry. So while I'll be working on all these different issues, but that one there is going to be the most controversial and the one that I will spend a great deal of time on. Thank you. Mr. Pipkin? Uh, in that vein, uh, something is going to have to be done very quickly uh, to get uh, a uh, hospital branch uh, uh, clinic, uh, whatever is appropriate, uh, out to service the New West development, you know, out to uh, uh, Petronco beyond 1604. A lot of Cal Bear County employees are buying homes out there. Uh, they cannot re remain without uh, effective county services. Thank you. Um, I understand that the, that the hospital district has done some planning on this, uh, but uh, the, this is something that the uh, the commissioner's court should be making a personal uh, priority of. Um, <clears throat> I've also heard uh, uh, Mr. Amaskita, the uh, chief tax appraiser, uh, address commissioner's court about the problems of the uh, appeal system. Uh, bottom line, as you might expect, the corporations who can afford perpetual litigation are getting the lion's share of, uh, uh, of appeal benefits and more and more uh, of the load gets shifted off on the residential taxpayer. 
Thank you, Mr. Pipkin. Okay. Next question. Sorry, I keep standing on the applauses here. <laughs> How about if we hold the applause until the end, and that way we can get more questions in, and then I don't look so mean. <laughs> um, so the next question, and we will start with uh, Mr. Souls. City and county lines of responsibility overlap in many areas. How do you propose to blend those lines to make government run smoothly? Well, I think that uh, that touches on city-county consolidation, which is going to be uh, difficult to achieve because there's so many uh, areas that don't overlap, and you have 24 different municipalities. Not all of them want to be in the same group, but we do have lots of areas that we can we can gain efficiencies. Uh, there's two areas in particular, though, where we have partnerships or we've had partnerships that offer efficiencies in government that uh, uh, the county judge has moved away from. The first is in the library system, where we have an existing library system that. Uh, serves the entire county. San Antonio Public Library, if you're anywhere in the county, you can access the services both digitally and uh, in person. But we've begun Bibliotech, which is now a duplication of those services. And at the end of the day, we're going to be, um, we're going, two minutes goes by fast. Um, it's, with that, we also have uh, animal care services, where again, the county's going off and they're creating another department. So. Instead of looking for consolidation, what's happened recently is we're moving away from consolidation. We're moving into duplicate services. That needs to be reined in. Thank you. And just to clarify for these questions, it's a one-minute response. I thought that was <laughs> <laughs> Bibliotech is uh, one of a kind. It's the first in the nation where it's an all-digital public library where we have all our technical people explain people how to run a, a computer how to access information on the internet, and then we break down the walls by taking the library to you, and we do it at a fraction, a fraction of the cost. We've gone into the courthouse where we've taken the library. We've gone into the Center for Families and Wounded Warriors. We've gone into the jail where we provided books for mothers that read to their children. We've gone into the school library systems. We started the first one. My wife raised over a, a, a million dollars for bibliotech, and we're buying 1,000 e-book readers. For the schools, we've just implemented the first school district. We're in the second one today. So it's an, very much an expansion. 67,000 e-books have been checked out since we started, and 100,000 visitors have come to our center on the south side of town. So an expansion. We're going to continue to help the uh, public library, but we are focusing on a lower cost, new technology, a different way of doing business, and when you do that, it causes problems. We do have problems out in the... Uh, outlying county areas with animal control. Uh, quite frankly, the city walked away from the responsibility of the contract we had. We took it over. We are doing a much, much better job than the city of San Antonio ever thought about doing. We saved over 100 pups just in one case alone where a breeder was mistreating them. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Wolf. Um, Mr. Pipkin. There's a uh, pernicious fable that uh, uh, city government in a major metropolitan area has more power than the county government. Uh, this is uh, absolutely untrue. An area where, uh, that, like you mentioned, where there is overlap. Uh, many people in, uh, in social and environmental justice believe this myth, too. You know, we go in, uh, uh, you know, exercise of futility before citizens to be ignored uh, over and over again when maybe we should be talking to the county uh, on like on Calumet you know on emissions uh, it's it's claimed that uh, that well all the regulatory power is with the city not entirely uh, I will have more on that in closing thank you mr. Smith Okay, uh, complicated issue for one minute. Uh, basically, I'm in agreement with uh, uh, Paul Pipkin in that we should not be having a battle between city and county. That's ridiculous. Uh, obviously, the county and the state override and overrule, and the idea that the city has somehow got, you know, 
extra sovereign power that, you know, we're, that, that's a crazy idea. I just want to talk quickly about domestic violence. Uh, it's been an issue for so many decades and uh, really violence throughout our society. 94% uh, of female murder victims are killed by men that they knew. Women experience two main injuries from intimate partner violence each year. 85% of incarcerated women are domestic violence survivors. U.S. troops in Afghanistan and Iraq, 6,000 killed. Uh, but U.S. women killed in the same period was by their partners was over 11,000. This is an issue in this state. We need right here, right now, to stand up and say, we're going to take responsibility in the future and right now for what happens throughout our community, whether it's in the city or the county. Thank you. Okay, the next question is along the same lines as the last. Since the city represents such a large portion of the county revenue, how would you balance the needs of the outlying areas with those of the city? And I'm sorry, we start with Judge Wolf. Okay, 85% of our citizens live within the city of San Antonio, so we have a, a great deal of responsibility to them also. But in the outlying areas, we're doing a number of things to do better. We created a $500 million flood control program that was done with all of the small cities in, the, in, in Bear County, some 24 of them, along with the city of San Antonio, and those projects are all over the county and making a big difference in flood control. All of our major road projects service out in the county area, uh, whether it's Calabria, whether it's Blanco, whether it's Bandera, uh, whether it's uh, uh, the, the, all the major roads that are, going, that are going west, as well as the money that we're putting into 1604 and, two, and 281. So those are all uh, very important components that we serve out in there. And then we're starting this year, we added about $26 million of our budget uh, going to the uh, Sheriff's Department uh, to create some 20 new officer positions and then also build a substation, a sheriff's substation in northwest, northeast, and then at the corner of 1604 and IH-10, a major communication center and, a, uh, and an office there also. So we're reaching out, uh, providing those services out in the rural areas also. Thank you. Mr. Pipkin? Well, in general, you have a lot more to work with uh, if you refrain from handing out uh, tax abatements to every major corporation that demands one. Uh, if indeed we see that there, uh, that there are new refineries uh, built uh, uh, just outside the city limits, and the word is that there are two or three in the works, uh, those operations should not receive one cent of tax abatement. Thank you. Mr. Smith? Yes. Uh, basically, we need better communication. Uh, I'm certainly appreciative of, uh, of what they're talking about spending, but on transportation, we need everyone to get involved in the issue of, you know, whether we're having transportation in the city or in the county. Uh, we have almost two million people in Bear County. Why don't we have the full comprehensive survey of every person, citizen, voter, and taxpayer, uh, so that we can know what their transportation needs are right now today, what is their transportation on a weekly basis and every year, and, and what th they think that they will need in the future. Uh, also, uh, I think uh, uh, just having that open communication where we're getting everybody involved in these uh, county commissioner court meetings or the city hall meetings so that people actually feel like they're part of the government and this government is working for them instead of the other way around. That's what, you know, public servants should be serving you, and you don't serve the public. I mean, you don't serve the uh, public officials. Thank you. Mr. Souls? Uh, thank you. Um, in terms of some of the basic things the county does, we're, uh, regardless if you're in San Antonio or in the outlying areas, unincorporated areas, uh, the jail serves all of Bear County uh, and all of the cities. Uh, the court system, the same, as well as the sheriff's department and the county hospital. So. I think that uh, it's really only in the area that, uh, of infrastructure that you begin to see the question of uh, is the outlying area being served or the other municipalities. One of my key issues with, with uh, the current administration is the concentration of countywide dollars into downtown central city San, uh, San Antonio. 
Uh, you've got $175 million of county flood tax going into a beautification project with really no uh, redeeming flood control uh, value. That's San Pedro Creek. You have uh, the, the Via Streetcar project that we were engaged in where you had uh, $92 million of countywide road funds diverted to. So I think that, uh, yes, we do have issues uh, throughout the county. I think that we've seen too much concentration, uh, again, uh, on want to have projects versus need to have projects. We need to get focused on the need to haves. And again, uh, I see a duplication of services, economic development, libraries, uh, animal care, that we have opportunities to save money, not, uh, not duplicate. Thank you. Next question, once elected, and we'll begin with Mr. Pipkin, once elected, how do you plan to keep the student population informed and involved? Well, we could stop repeatedly trying to uh, eliminate polling places on the campus. Um, you know, that's, that came up last time. Um, I think it was an early voting site. but. Uh, like UTSA, uh, you know, you want you want the students to vote. Uh, well, m in those dorms, you've got a captive audience out there. If they're going to vote, they have to. Many of them have to vote right there. Uh, there should never even have been a uh, idea floated about eliminating a voting site uh, out of that campus. Um, and I think uh, possibly the. Uh, a more intangible thing would be for government to uh, listen to uh, uh, listen to students when they uh, when they do speak up. There are a lot of protests, uh, small but a lot of them in this city, that uh, uh, are mainly uh, are are very largely student uh, constituencies. You know, government should be listening to the students when they speak out on issues. Listening seriously, instead of just trying to do the, uh, the mandate of your party. Thank you. Mr. Smith? Uh, thank you. I uh, haven't heard that question too many times, and I've run for public office a lot. But uh, one thing we try to do is is reach out to the students and I certainly am active in trying to get uh, to communicate with as many students as uh, many uh, of our colleges around here as possible. I would, I would certainly uh, like to see more of uh, student involvement. I don't know, uh, you know what laws we would have to uh, address to do that, but uh, basically I would certainly want uh, to invite students to participate in the government, uh, whether uh, you know it's our, certainly our community colleges and our uh, would be one of the most important ways we could do that. But I'm certainly thrilled that UTSA has an interest uh, in this, and I'm really happy that uh, you, we're here at UTSA today. And I I want to encourage this, so I'm going to try to partner with more of the colleges. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Souls. Thank you. Um, one of the things we hear a lot about is the need for an educated workforce in Bear County and San Antonio. And with one of the largest, I mean, we have a tremendous student population between all the community colleges, the UT system, the A&M system, the private colleges. What we don't have is a great educated workforce that stays here because they find all the opportunities they need. And I think that's, uh, as, we, as we talk about engagement, everyone talks about engaging the students. But the real world is, after the election, that tends to fall off. We need to really begin the discussion with students, with educators, about uh, how, do we, how do we make the opportunities uh, possible so that they do stay here. And I, I, that's an area, I mean, I really, truly, uh, I have kids that are college age, and hopefully one day we'll have grandkids, and I want my children and your children and y'all to have those opportunities. So. You know, I think that as I get into office, we'll want to convene some groups and begin discussing what are ways that we can, uh, we can keep you here, if you want to be here. Thank you. Mr. Wolf? Uh, well, well, first of all, uh, on the communication piece and the outreach by county government, uh, if you're, you can get an app called Your Government, 
and you can go to it and it'll list every service that we provide and you can click on the thing that you're most interested in doing. We also have a website that's a comprehensive website about elections, about everything that we do. And this year, we took a step and we put uh, four of the early voting precincts on uh, uh, campuses. Uh, we have one out at UTSA on the main campus. We have one, I think, at the San Antonio Junior College, one at uh, Palo Alto, and then I believe one at A&M. I might have one of those wrong, but we, we've gone on to four campuses. I hope young people will go vote. Uh, we're making that opportunity. and. Uh, and, and, and I hope they'll take advantage of it and, and do go vote in, in, in those sites that we're providing, the early vote sites. Thank you. Okay, the next question, we'll start with Mr. Smith. And I have two questions here that are very, very similar. And they're from couples who have been away from San Antonio for 15 and 24 years and have come back to find the road conditions appalling. And so I'm going to combine the questions to say, um, where did the tax dollars go that would have been invested in street maintenance, especially in poorer communities? When will the county begin spending money on roads rather than concentrating on the inner city? So, Mr. Uh, Mr. Smith. Okay. Uh, well, <laughs> where the dollars went, what's happened here is, I'm sure you're all aware, there's a tremendous influx of population from all over uh, the United States and the world into Texas. So, you know, this is something, kind of an emergency situation where we're trying to deal with a large increase in population. And, you know, the old saw about, well, I wasn't born in Texas, but I got here as quick as I could. Uh, it seems like a lot of people find this as a good part of the world to live in. And, and uh, so basically, I, I'm not sure, I've lived in Texas all my life, born and raised in a small town, and went to UT and, uh, you know, served in the United States Navy and came back here. Uh, I, I don't know what they're talking about, where all the dollars went. There weren't any dollars. Uh, you know, we, we're trying to fund that. We're trying to refine the dollars right now. And uh, when are we going to begin spending? I've run for mayor more than anybody in this city, I think. <laughs> uh, that, they always say that is the number one issue that it, okay, this is the streets, okay. Thank you. I'm going to put on my city councilman hat for a minute and say, yes, the roads are uh, getting worse. And you have to look at, we've got about $5 billion of identified road repair needs. That's not new roads, that's roads being repaired. And we're spending in the city budget about $45 million a year. So we're covering less than 1% of the identified need. And that doesn't uh, bode well for the long-term uh, aspect of our roads. Uh, you know, from a county perspective, I believe county government spent too much of the last 13 years looking at light rail and looking at streetcars and didn't get focused on the needs of county roads, where the bulk of the population is now growing. Go out 281, 35, I-10, Highway 90, anywhere, and you're going to see tens of thousands of rooftops built out to the county line already. So the growth's already happened, and it's coming south from other counties as fast as it's going north. We've really been derelict in our duties in, um, in figuring out how to build not only the highways, but the arterial so that people can get around. So you know, I think that's our, our most critical infrastructure issue, and it's one of the most uh, the things I'll focus on immediately. Thank you. Mr. Wolf. Well, we invest a, a great deal of money in county roads. If we didn't have to pay for the state's highways, we would be able to buy, build a lot more county roads. We had to put in $266 million on highway systems, which is a tragedy and a terrible mistake of the state not taking care of it. But we do build a lot of county roads. Bernie Stage Road, I think I mentioned Calabria, I mentioned Blanco. All those were state roads. But we had to put up the money to build them, to get them going. We do get a pass-through financing on some of them from the state, but had we not put up the money, those roads would have never, never been completed. Uh, we have a whole list of different uh, road projects that we're doing. We'd be glad to furnish those to you. We built over 400 and some odd million dollars uh, worth of roads in the last in the years that I've been there. So we put a great deal of money into it. But the fact of the matter is, we are growing so fast that there's no way we can keep up with it unless we build a good public transit system, and that has to go along with it. A park and ride is going to be built out on 281 at Jones-Malsberger. 
a park and ride at IH10 at Fair Oaks Road, uh, uh, a, another park and ride at, at, out at uh, Brooks Base, um, transfer stations east and west of downtown. Uh, so you're going to have to have a combination of both of those, bus rabbit, a rapid for us to be able to handle our transportation issues. Thank you. Mr. Pipkin. I agree about pub, uh, with the judge about public transportation. <clears throat> um, I'd take that further. You'll take a lot of weight off of uh, uh, these roads that are being be built, beat up uh, if you would bring in light rail. And I'm not talking about trolleys. You know, if, if indeed San Antonio is going to expand to the proportions of DFW, then why don't we have something like DART? You know, why, why don't we have a genuine light rail transit system? Uh, th uh, that, would, that would be something I would be looking at. Thank you. Okay, this will be our final question. And actually, I have two very good ones here, so it's a toss-up. But <laughs> I think uh, this one probably bears some attention. Is there a, f I'm sorry, and we're going to start with Mr. Souls. Is there a fire station on the south side near South Side School District? Would you put that as a priority once elected? Uh, I think that the, you know, one of the things when I was on San Antonio City Council, I was the head of the Public Safety Committee, and we uh, commissioned a study to look at response times across San Antonio. What we found is the farther you got away from the center of the city, the, uh, the worse the response times got, especially uh, looking at EMS, emergency response. So, you know, I hear a lot as I traverse the county about issues relating to response times and having equal service across the different fire districts. I don't have an absolute answer on that other than I will tell you that uh, making sure that every citizen of Bear County has adequate fire and EMS uh, and public safety protection will be a top priority, and that means we need to look at a station on that side of town. Uh, wherever the need is, is where we need to put resources, and that'll be the focus. Thank you. Mr. Wolf. Uh, the legislature finally gave us a little breathing room. Uh, just so everybody understands, we work on 31 cents on the tax roll. The city works on 56.5. They also have a sales tax. They also have a CPS tax that goes into their coffers, paid, by the way, by citizens that live out in the rural area, but it all goes to the city of San Antonio. Uh, finally, the legislature did give us a, authority to create um, emergency fire districts, and we've created about four or five of those where people do pay a little bit more on their property tax based on their vote to do so. So we've had a complete volunteer system of fire departments out in the county. We're now slowly but surely beginning to get some professional fire help out in the county through the emergency fire districts. Thank you. Mr. Pipkin? Uh, to, to your question, uh, yes. Uh, and, and it would not be, uh, it would not be close in Southside either. It would be like South Harlandale, uh, in, uh, in reach of Via Coronado even. Okay, thank you. Mr. Smith? Uh, I'm certainly interested in uh, improving our uh, fire uh, protection out to the south side and I, uh, I don't see a problem with that. Uh, I agree with Mr. Wolf that, uh, you know, we, we only get 31 cents, uh, so, you know, the state uh, can play a much bigger part in, uh, in doing this. And uh, Bear County has a legislative uh, outreach so that we can try to ask the state legislature to uh, meet uh, more responsibilities. And I believe uh, that I will work even more closely uh, with this outreach and try to get our uh, state representatives uh, involved and uh, even our, uh, you know, national leaders, our uh, congressmen. Thank you. Um, before we have the two-minute closing statements from the candidates, I just want to uh, make you aware that we had also planned to have a forum for district attorney candidates this evening. However, one of the candidates declined to participate. The other candidate is here, and according to our guidelines, he will be allowed to give a two-minute opening slash closing statement. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So, but some of the candidates here need to leave and be other places. So I just wanted to make you aware of that before we finish up with the closing statements. So we will begin with a two minute closing statement by Mr. Wolf. Well, again, thank you very, uh, very much for doing this and the great work that the league has done over the years. I'm so impressed with UTSA. I was mayor when we uh, built this campus downtown. I pushed very, very hard for that to be done here. And I'm pleased to see that it is here in the central city and, and that, you, that you guys are attending at least some of your, some of your classes here in the downtown, in the downtown campus. Uh, we will continue to work on creating jobs. Uh, since I've been in office, uh, uh, we've worked with the city, with the private sector. We contribute to EDF. We do it all in a partnership. And some 167,000 jobs have been created, net new jobs, in the last last 13 years. We're going to continue to uh, to work hard so that we're given an opportunity for young people to stay here in San Antonio. I have six children. I have seven grandchildren, and I'm not sure how many more I'm going to have. But I want them all to stay right here in San Antonio. So we want to try try to provide that opportunity where you can do well here, make a good living here, and raise a family. I don't think there's a better place in the in the United States in which to do that. A, a number of these economic uh, projects are occurring out in the county. Uh, the growth in economic development projects is out in the county rather than in the city of San Antonio. Uh, we've been able to bring, have Toyota, Petco, Medtronic. We've had all the big uh, companies here, Halliburton, Baker Hughes, Weatherford, Slumberjay, uh, several of the production companies up here north of San Antonio. So we're going to continue to work on building that opportunity for young people I know that those of us that are in my age category, uh, 74, maybe not too many are in that age category, but we want our kids to stay here with us. So it's in our advantage, even though we may uh, not be out looking for a new job, to have, to have a place where our grandchildren can stay here in San Antonio. I want to thank you very much again. I want to thank you for allowing me to serve as your county judge, and I hope you'll give me four more years. Thank you. Mr. Souls. Thank you, and I also want to thank you for sharing again your evening with us. Um, there's so many more questions we could have gotten to. I wish we had had a little bit more time. You know, we hadn't talked about things like uh, the debt that we're going to be burdening you with. Uh, when my predecessor, or when my opponent came into office, there was $250 million worth of debt. Now there's $1.7 billion worth of debt sitting on the books that we're going to have to pay for. Uh, my opponent was an advocate for streetcars and toll roads, and we disagree on that. I don't believe we should toll existing roadways, and I don't believe we should build streetcars downtown. Um, one of the things I think that I heard this evening that perhaps you'll, you'll recollect is there was issues with the county and the city on libraries, so we built our own library system. In fact, in a previous debate, uh, Nelson called the San Antonio library system a monopoly that needed competition. We alluded to issues with animal care services and the inability to work together and with the state on highway systems. And you know that begins to see a partnership where, or a, a situation where we're not building partnerships, we're, we're walking away from partnerships. Uh, I think that that's the wrong approach. I think we need to build partnerships for the future. Again, we're gonna be a big place. We've got uh, you know, two million people now and another million coming soon. And that's going to offer us a lot of challenges that we need to prepare for. So I look forward to, as county judge, building those partnerships, uh, planning for the future, and getting ready for us to be successful. So thank you so much, and uh, hope you got something out of this evening. Mr. Smith? Yes. Uh, thank, thank you. Uh, you did a good job. <laughs> uh, I uh, want to uh, address uh, everyone here in the audience and thank each of you for coming, and uh, particularly the League of Women Voters for uh, allowing us. Uh, Paul Pipkin and I were not included in the uh, primaries for good reason. We have a convention, not a primary. But uh, the League of Women Voters said that they wanted to have something for all the candidates, and thank you again. Uh, basically, I want to close tonight uh, and remind uh, remind you that uh, freedom isn't free. And I, uh, having served in the United States military, I want to uh, ask you to really think about your role and uh, my role and the, the role that we, we play in world leadership and uh, basically talk a little bit about indigenous people, the, uh, 
the great, uh, uh, you know, society and indigenous community that was here long before Christopher Columbus came to the New World, the so-called New World, uh, came to the Western Hemisphere and the indigenous people and the civilization that was here. And I think that as we build for the future and look to that, we should also remember our past. And so we uh, have met over the years with, uh, over the years, I say years, uh, but certainly the last few months with the uh, Alamo uh, uh, Commission uh, because they're planning uh, to make recommendations uh, about the uh, Alamo Plaza and the uh, Hemisphere Plaza. And we feel very strongly that the history and culture that was here, you know, at the time of the uh, Spanish colonization should, all sh uh, should also be recognized. And there's ways to do that because that indigenous history is right here. It's buried. I don't know if any of you have been to Rome, Italy, but I, when I went over there, you know, what we learned was that the city of ancient Rome from thousands of years ago was buried right beneath the city of modern, modern Rome. And that's some ways the way it is here in, in, uh, in Texas. And certainly we want to find ways to uh, reach out and understand the great rich, richness of culture and society uh, that we can learn from. And in a world that is so in so much conflict around the world, in the Middle East and uh, throughout the world, uh, I'm, a, I'm a person that you know, reaches out to, uh, to all religions, and I want to uh, recognize the indigenous people and Native American people. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Pipkin? Uh, following on uh, something I didn't have time for earlier, uh, when, when it's maintained the county doesn't have regulatory authority, depends on what you mean by regulation. Uh, county government is powerful. Uh, anytime a road, a pipeline, either Eagle Ford sludge or the current debate over the water pipeline, uh, anytime a project like that traverses the county, uh, the uh, commissioner's court is in, uh, in the business of overseeing uh, technical condemnation procedures for easements. In other words, any of those arteries could be stopped if the, the commissioners or the county judge believed was inimical to the interest of Texas citizens at either end uh, of, the, of the, say, the pipeline, uh, they could stop it in its tracks. Uh, down the line, you may uh, be happy that, uh, the, uh, that the county does have this kind of power. Uh, if you, uh, I don't know if any of you have had occasion to see what, uh, to notice what's been going on in Michigan, in like Detroit with their water problem, uh, like uh, uh, Benton Harbor where civil government has virtually been abolished. Uh, you know, it's interesting uh, that uh, in Texas, if a municipality fell, in, no matter how large, fell into financial straits. Texas doesn't even need a so-called emergency manager law. Uh, they could take over and uh, abolish the government uh, of the city, uh, the same as they've do done already with some school districts. Uh, but that can't happen to a county. A county is a subset of the state itself. You know, and its powers are very clearly laid out in the state constitution. You know, but you, uh, you're going to have to have county uh, in the future with the crises that are coming on us, you're going to have to have county of, uh, officials that will exercise that power. You know, and not just hand everything off to the corporations. Thank you, Mr. Pipkin. Uh, in the league, we like to start on time and end on time. So I would also like to thank Nowcast and Charlotte Ann Lucas for coming out and live, stream live streaming tonight's candidate forum. Um, it will be on their website, so if you know somebody who was interested but unable to be here, please let them know that they will be able to find it at nowcastsa.org. <laughs> um, and please join me in thanking the four candidates for county judge. I hope you learned something.
I know Judge Wolf needs to be someplace else, so um, at this time I would like to invite Nicholas LaHood, candidate for district attorney, to come and make a two-minute statement. I am very disappointed uh, that Susan Reed chose not to be here. There comes a time to look in the mirror and ask if, if it's time for new vision. Susan Reed's performance for the last 16 years is in question. And I'll start with the child abuse crisis. Bear County has led the state in the number of child abuse cases, the whole state. We also have only a 38% conviction rate for indecency with a child and sexual assault of a child. We have the distinction of having a 75% repeat, repeat offender rate. These are real children with real futures, if we protect them and provide structure and opportunity they need. But as my pop has taught me, talk is cheap. Actions speak louder than words. This is why it will take true leadership to find an answer for these plaguing problems. Judge Tsai has been a true leader, going above and beyond to foster a conversation and put forward ideas and reforms to help us better protect kids. But these have been conversations Susan Reed chooses not to engage in. I stand before you a man that has not been perfect, but I have perfect intentions for our community. A community that includes my precious three children and God willing someday my grandchildren. My opponent only wants to talk about my troubles with the law over 20 years ago. My faith and our justice system believe in redemption and I am very proud of the man that is before you today. She also makes issues, believe it or not, of my tattoos. My tattoos are composed of the Archangel Michael the Archangel Gabriel, the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and my children's names. For me, they reflect my faith and the honor of my brother who was taken from us in a violent crime in my parents' home. Drawing attention to these things is her attempt to distract voters um, from her unacceptable performance as our district attorney. In my professional career, I've been a magistrate judge appointed by every district court judge, both Democrat and Republican. I've been a special prosecutor in four counties, I have instructed at two law enforcement academies, police academies, and I've been an adjunct professor at St. Mary's University. I have put together a plan to reform our justice system based off co-laboring with law enforcement and you, the community. I will lead our district attorneys by example in the courtroom and not just by words. I humbly and respectfully ask for your vote as your district attorney. Thank you, and I wish we could talk more. The League of Women Voters Nonpartisan Voter Guide a special guide to assist voters to cast informed vote in the November 4 election is available on the League website, lwvsanantonio.org. Printed copies will be available in public libraries the week of October 20th. Again, 